This is the Worship Team Training Podcast with your host and training director, Brandon Dempsey. Worship Team Training provides live workshops and online resources to help inspire, create, and transform the leading of worship. Now, here's your host, Brandon Dempsey. Hello, welcome. What's going on? All of our friends right now on Facebook Live, also on Periscope. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you guys are doing great. What's going on, everybody? Hey, I'm Brandon Dempsey with AworshipTeamTraining.com. Hey, great to see you. Yeah, we finally made it. And man, so great to have you today. And we are just putting out our last tweets right now. And uh, man, we are excited. We got a lot of great stuff to show you today. A lot of great stuff with our actual uh, piano stuff. We've been talking about 1,000 the song 1000 tongues by vertical church and um that's been uh, something that's been on our minds this whole week. Uh, it's been just a great, great, great experience to be with you today. So, hey, welcome. Look at all the fantastic folks coming in on Periscope Live. Rod Brady, what's up? Sharice, and also our very own Oscar on Periscope. What's going on, Facebook Live? How you guys doing? And ET762, how are you? Uh, we are broadcasting uh, three live, try live with Periscope, also Facebook Live. And if you're listening to us on the Worship Team Training Facebook page, uh, also worshipingtraining.com podcast, and we welcome you guys to the show. Glad that you guys are here. If you would, please take a moment right now and share this broadcast out with all your friends. Let everybody know what is up, and we do appreciate the way that you share all of our broadcasts, both Periscope, Facebook Live, and our Worship Team Training podcast. We got the podcast going, and if you haven't joined it already, you can find us on iTunes. That's Worship Team Training podcast. You can't miss it, and uh, we thank you guys for joining us. So let's get this thing going. We got a lot to show you. We're going to be talking about piano stuff today with the song 1,000 Tongues by Vertical Church, the brand new song uh, written by Chris Tomlin, Andy Rosner, Matt Marr, uh, great, 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 Jason Ingram, uh, fantastic writers. Uh, But let's kick this show off, and man, I hope you guys are ready to go. Who am I? My name is Brandon Dempsey. I'm a follower of Jesus and also happen to be a CEO of worshipteentraining.com, in which we are a ministry that we serve worship teams. That's right. So we come to you to do a one or two day event just for you and your worship team, hands on training. That would be me live at your church campus. One to one, way better than two, three thousand people, although that's cool. But we come to you uniquely and customize every workshop to your needs. We do the same thing in our mentoring program. If you feel like, hey, you just need an extra step nudge in your journey, we are here to help. You can check out everything at worshipteentraining.com. And while you're there, sign up for the Monday Morning Digest and you'll get a free ebook and you can find more about our programs there. So I'm not going to talk any much, uh, not any further about that because you already go, you guys already know what to do. Crystal Renee on Periscope, what's going on? How are you? We got some great friends coming. If you would take the time right now and please, if you're watching by uh, Facebook or Periscope, swipe and invite. If you're listening by the audio podcast, please uh, course share this out as well and when do we air like this we air month we air tuesdays and thursday mornings all right and that's going to be at 10 a.m central standard time and also the scopes and broadcasts and podcasts who are they for they are for worship leaders worship teams musicians singers pastors i can't get my words right because i'm just so excited to come to you but all related in worship these shows are for you and we thank you guys so much for checking this out so and also all of our friends if you're watching by the playback listening thanks so much for joining we got some great things and we invite you if you're watching by video you can comment live just type into the window box right there just like what our good friend crystal renee did on periscope facebook live you guys can do the same thing as we take off here and we're going to get going the post that i'm talking about today you can find at worshipteentraining.com and the post is called six ways to retrain your pianist all right, so six ways to retrain your pianist. Michael, what's going on? Michelle, what's going on on Facebook Live? Glad you guys are joining us. And also Jenny, uh, who's been watching us as well. And so let's go ahead. We got some announcements to come up tomorrow. Uh, man, tomorrow is almost here. We have our songwriting contest that we launched off about probably two, three months ago. And we've gotten about 25, 30 entries 
over the uh, the past weeks, and a lot of the entries are just very well done. You guys have went out of your way. If you submitted a project to us, a song, thank you so much. Uh, we can tell you put in a lot of time and a lot of hard work. A lot of guys recorded this by their uh, either in their professional studio or maybe they did this within your church at a live worship event or even just on stage or in their own church studio. So thank you guys so much. Um, we as a judging panel are three of us we are having a difficult time because there's a lot of great songs and so we are going to announce the winner the winner is going to be announced tomorrow november the 4th right here facebook live periscope and also the audio podcast but it's better if you watch it live by video because you get it quicker and that's going to be at 10 a.m central standard time we will announce the grand prize winner for the sure microphone that's this microphone right here it's the motive line and it's a podcasting mic uh also there is a tablet iphone android mic as well so it's your choice whatever that you like and we have some prizes given away by Kaiser Capos, also by GuideTracks.co, and a year free subscription from Worship Musician Magazine. So already we got some great folks coming in, and we thank you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow, so be sure to join us 10 a.m. tomorrow. And if you missed out on this songwriting contest, don't worry. We got one coming in March of next year, 2017. Our other good friends over at Yamaha are on the loose and right now they're figuring out what is going to be the grand prize for you so anyway can't wait to do that but t tomorrow tomorrow tune in on the fourth it's gonna be a lot of fun 10 a.m right here uh also moving on with our worship team training webinar if you want to improve the confidence of your song writing and maybe that's the uh the wall or the hurdle that you're trying to jump over well we have a great free webinar for you by nashville christian songwriters John Chisholm. That's going to be, we moved it. It was going to be on election day, but we figured too many people are going to be tied up with election. Hopefully you voted early, but we encourage you guys to go out and vote. Uh, but we, we want to make sure that this webinar is done on a different day. Election days is way too busy. So the 15th of November at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time is when we will do the webinar. And it's called Confident Worship Songwriting. You can't miss it. You can find everything there at worshipteentraining.com for all that and more. So let's talk about the track today featured by uh, our awesome producer, Scott Hussey at guidetracks.co. Be sure to go by their website and check out the free track of the month. And they got some Christmas stuff coming in too uh, but we are here to talk about our uh, topic of how do we retrain our pianist now what do I mean by that let me just ask you what is your pianist like uh, some bands have the pianist that has done maybe studio recording uh, maybe they played in a lot of live bands maybe they are, are very experienced others are experienced in other ways uh, maybe they've done classical music all their lives maybe they've done a lot of lessons maybe they haven't maybe they're just a novice brand new so i ask you in the comment uh, live right here uh, what is your pianist like in your worship band are you maybe the only pianist in your worship band? Um, I know two of our ladies that are watching right now are, and you know who you are. But I'm going to give you some tips and tricks of what you can do to expand the sound of your songs and uh, to make your piano playing a lot more open and a lot more broad. So hope you're ready. Uh, we're going to jump into also talking about A Thousand Tongues and... Uh, we're going to be using that song as our example today. So let's get going. As a worship leader, you want your band to sound full. Okay, there's no mistake about it. Uh, most piano and keyboard players, and by the way, um, I mean, you guys want to have the full sound, and you definitely, um, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're providing all that you can to your band. Now, uh, just real quick, I'm also putting up the last few, uh, last few links on Facebook Live and also for today's post. So again, if you're listening by audio, if you're watching this live by video, uh, the post today is six ways to retrain your pianist. And I just put that up just now on Facebook Live. Anyway, let's go to this. Uh, piano players are known for being the one-man band. If you break everything down and uh, let's say uh, the piano player themselves, they're responsible for melody, harmony, rhythm all at once. And uh, they're, they're known for always, if, if you're talking about a true indeed pianist, they're used to playing everything all at one time. However, it gets 
a little bit different when you enter the contemporary worship band. As most of you know, most of you know about this very, very well. Some of you, this may be a new thing, not sure. But I'm going to go over some ideas that uh, hopefully will inspire and expand your music vocabulary. And for those of you who uh, may know what I'm talking about, then great. Then you can share this broadcast out with your friends. So we hope that you do that. And I'm open to ideas. You got questions? Please type those in right now, Facebook Live, and also on Periscope. So, so thanks so much. Also, audio podcast. You guys can talk back to us as well. So, piano players again, they're known for playing everything. However, pianists are also familiar with covering all the parts. But when they join a worship band and they try to play in the same mold, uh, it very quickly do they realize that it doesn't work. And so does everybody else in the band. They realize too that, hey, this is way too much. It's too much piano. And as a worship leader, you could, you may be saying, yeah, how do I communicate this to my pianist? Or it can be any other musician in the band that overplays or plays all the time and you're having to pull them back well i'm going to show you some ideas of what you can do here uh there's six ways that you can retrain your pianist all right number one uh let's start with uh, as we talk about the song a uh, thousand tongues i want to play that in just a second um i'm going to break this down for you because i'm we're talking about the key of g okay so i'm in g right here on my piano and uh you can hear that through the system Okay, so simply when a pianist plays, they're having, you know, they're, you know, it's, it's all choppy. It's, it's all at once. Uh, we're going to learn how to play, you know, in style. There's a lot of difference between what I've just last played and what I played before that. So how do we help the pianist and how do we retrain them? Number one, let the bass play the left hand. Um, I say that in love because the pianist, I even spoke with some pianists last week about this very topic. And it was like, well, why do we not want to play the left hand? Well, because the bass player has got those parts covered. And what that does is forces the left hand to be muted on the pianist so that they can focus in on the tight chords right here in the center, whatever that they are. Okay, and I'm just playing right in the center instead of playing, you know, across, you know, and that's fine too. But right now we're just talking about tight chords in the middle. Okay, now most often people also overplay and oversing their parts. So this is number two. The, the easy solution is to play half of what you would normally play. So if I'm, you know, as a pianist, I want to just make my chords maybe whole notes. Okay. And I'm not trying to overplay the song uh, because it gets in the way. And we want to make room for the band and what everything else is happening with the drums, with the bass guitar, with the other guitars, and we don't want to clash. So that's a, that's a big deal. So also, number three, avoid playing the melody with the right hand. Lose that right hand. Don't play the melody. Let the guitars, or more importantly, let the vocals carry that melody part. Because a lot of the times we can get in the way as pianists. Um, my piano player, I, I had to encourage her not to play over what and where the melody is being sung in the song. Because it can get a lot of intonation problems and just it can cover up what the vocals need to do. Crystal says, I'm free in the spirit. Um, other times, discipline, love playing on the left side. Yeah. And, and a lot of players do. So thanks for that, Crystal, she says on Periscope. Um, you know, the left hand is kind of everywhere. So we want to keep everything nice and tight in the center. Okay. And maybe sometimes that doesn't work. Uh, it could be different registers. But what you want to do as a pianist is to figure out what's happening in the band by listening back and using your ear to determine what's high and what's low. In other words, is are there a lot of parts being played in the higher registers? Are there a lot of parts being played in the lower registers or maybe in the middle? So you want to use good discernment. What I do if I'm playing by guitar or if I'm playing keys, I do that. I tend to listen back before I play, I listen first. So that's another tool and tip for you is to listen first, look around, see what else is happening because if you have a lot of, you know, you know, you have a lot of that going on in the lower registers by the bass and the drums and guitar, then I want to play up here and just go two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
two, three, four, you know, just keep it simple. Crystal says, yes, I was just about to say that, the sermon. Very good, she says on Periscope Live. Uh, so the same thing, if there's a lot of higher registers and plain low. Okay, so we beat that pretty good. Uh, the drummer is going to have the job of keeping time, not the pianist. So rely on your drummer, all right? I'm going to go through a track in just a minute, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I want to move on and talk a little bit more, and, I, and probably what I'll do is just start the track right now so you can hear it, and then I'm going to move on with uh, points four, five, and six, all right? So let's get our track going right now. Uh, this song, again, is Thousand Tongues by Vertical Church. Check it out at guytracks.co. And I got Logic running right here. Intro two. Listen for the whole band part. So we have kick and claps, playing on all fours. And we have our melody in the left hand, on the right hand. So that's just the intro only, and you may be thinking, yeah, did, let me just ask you, did you hear any piano at all? Okay, you heard the keyboard, and that was doing the, uh, the figure like this. Just in the right hand, okay? That's all you heard. Everything else was just driven by guitars, kick drum, and bass. And also there's a lower synth in the left hand making this big. So one way to help expand the sound of your band is to not have just one person play all those parts. But what's really cool, uh, I've done this before, if you have a bass player that knows how to play keys, also maybe set a keyboard right beside them and have them play maybe some synth bass on the intro of the songs or the lighter parts and then move to the real bass part, uh, the real guitar during the choruses or bridge or whatever. Those are just some texture changes that you can do. Um, but right here we have a lot of activity. So as a pianist, I want to emulate that same thing. And so I'll play along with the track so you can hear it. So here's my opening. We're in G. Intro, two, three, here we go. Four. Just nice and easy. Okay, and you hear what's going on? You hear what's going on in the middle section uh, right here in this register? You hear you have the guitar part playing on G in the middle of that stream. And so what I want to do is by by playing that melody up here. It's out of the way. The same thing with the lower register. Okay, there's nothing getting in the way there. So I want to keep everything nice, easy, and balanced. And um, as we go into the verse, you'll hear that in a second. So here's our verse part. See, the best part even here is that I'm not even playing really. I'm, I'm just letting the band do it. And then we get to the chorus. One, two, three, and. Simply what I'm doing is I'm playing at halftime. I'm just going a thousand times with praise, right? The glory of your name, you are worthy. Okay, and I'm just playing half notes. One, two, or quarter notes. Four, one, two. Actually, those are half notes because we're playing at halftime. So it's the counts are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. keeping it simple so the better i can keep that simple then the band is able to find their way around the music and i'm not getting in the way by you know even playing the, the opening line you know right here 
Mm-hmm. You know, and if I did all that, that's that's great. If I was only maybe myself another guitar player, but the fact that I have a whole band, I don't have to be all over the keyboard. So um, that's where we start getting into doubling parts, which is very very important. And I didn't say on the last point about why not to play the melody when the vocals are singing because then that doubles the part so we don't want to double the part it doesn't sound great it sounds static and we also want to stay away from intonation issues that can happen if the singers are slightly off or if the piano playing is slightly off then that's not going to sound good together uh, the fifth point is think of yourself as five keys not 88 keys so i'm going to demonstrate in this band, in this uh, track one more time of my playing and i'm going to turn the uh track down just a little bit so that you can hear it clearly and I'll play the verse section here we go so I'm just holding down whole notes right here not doing a lot And then that leads us right into the chorus. So all I'm playing here is just two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and two. All right. Now, a lot of pianists that I've I've given this example before, the first thing they say to me is, yeah, but Brandon, that's boring. Okay, you're right. It's boring for you because you're the only one playing it. However, you got to realize what we're talking about in the context of the band. Then that's actually it sits very, very well. Thanks for that, Crystal Renee. And thanks for the hearts, everybody, in Periscope and also Facebook Live. Um, the more and more that you can get out of the way as a musician, the more you're allowing the music to come through for the team to interact with you. And that seems to be kind of a lost art because, again, musicians get very, very impatient. I mean, they just want to play and play and play and play. And that's great. Uh, but, you know, if you want to play and play and get all that stuff out, it's better for you just to maybe, you know, in your own practice time, that's great. Or if you're jamming with another band member, awesome. But when you're playing with the whole team and you're going through a rehearsal or even mo- most of all, you're going through a service – Less is more. And uh, so Crystal had said that. Thanks for that, Crystal. So that's why I say think about five keys. The keys that I'm playing are G natural. I'm playing a G2. And a G2 is a G natural, A natural, D. Now, if I want, I can double the octave and the fifth together with the uh, G, A, D, and I get this sound. And I'm spreading that over just uh, two, about two octaves. Okay. If I just want to double the octave only, then it's just a low G here and an octave G here, A natural, D natural. See, even that may be a little bit too much because you have to think about what the drummer is doing and the bass guitarist. Reason why is because piano, bass, and drums act together as a unit. And they are kind of like, you know... Uh, the head, the arms, and the legs of a, of a body, basically. I mean, they're the ones that are really uh, all the engine. Uh, they are the engine, and they're driving everything. Uh, the other guitar parts, lead, acoustic, uh, second keyboard, if you got horns, uh, then that's kind of like the other extensions uh, that make up the rest of the body, but your main part is going to be your piano, bass, and drums. Uh, just like the, uh, the foundation of a song is going to come down to the lyrics, and the vocal. So that's one way to think about it, but you don't want to interrupt that path of musically what's happening. So what I do is I think horizontally, not vertically. In other words, when I'm playing, I don't think about what's vertical as to just me, me and my instrument, just connecting to the keyboard or just connecting to the guitar. I want to connect horizontally. There's a big difference in that perspective. So the more that you think outward instead of inward, then the more you're going to pay attention to what's happening with the other guitars, the bass, the drums, and it gives you a lot more continuity and a lot more context. So let's play that example again, shall we? So here we go, loading back with Logic. (laughs) 
So I'm keeping that simple. And then like even, you know, going back on this track, um, I'll give you a little example of what's happening. If you think about a multi-track recorder, that's a perfect example of how maybe your band can balance uh, sounds together and what you can do, what's your part, what's not your part. Um, I like to think, again, as my band, as a multi-track unit, I can mute certain channels. I'm not saying I can mute people. That's not what I'm saying. But um, if I go through this example, uh, let's say I want to just uh, mute everybody else and solo the bass guitar and the drums, and then I get this. That's the chorus, and I want to play along with it. Okay, now we're into the bridge. So I got off a little bit, but what I wanted to demonstrate is what's happening in just those three pieces, those three instruments making up that whole unit. Okay. Now, um, a couple of other things too. Uh, this, those are the six points. So I'll just recap those real quick. Uh, the first point is to let the bass play the left hand. Uh, that's number one. Number two, don't overplay, oversing your part. Number three, avoid playing the melody. Lose the right hand also. That puts you right in the middle, okay? Number four, don't double the parts of the vocalist. So if you're not playing with both hands on both registers, then you're not going to get in the way of the vocalist. Number five, think of yourself as five keys, not 88 keys. And then the last point, think horizontal, thinking out. Not vertical, just me and the guitar or me and the keyboard. Now, keep in mind, there are times that you do, you need to be thinking about your part and about your instrument. What I'm saying is, is that you don't block everybody else out where you're the only solo that's happening. That's my point right there. So now let's turn to uh, a little bit more techie stuff for you pianists out there and keyboardists, because you may be wondering, well, how can I get new sounds? I mean, uh, keyboards, you know, they... I guess they're filled with anywhere between, depending on what keyboard you have, you can have 200 sounds to maybe 20,000 sounds or 2,000 sounds. I mean, it's just really, uh, it's a plethora out there. So how do I get the right sound? Um, I'm going to load up some things on um, main stage. And also, I just want to do a big shout out to uh, David Falsgraf, who is a great friend over at Default Sounds. You can check their website out. Just uh, go to Default Sounds. Dot com and you can find out all the patches that he makes on main stage. I'm pulling up my main stage right now and showing you what I'm able to do. Main stage is just a software program that's by Mac. So if you have a Mac, uh, awesome, do that. And then you want to get this app, Main Stage 3. That's the latest update. Now, I'm not going to go through everything on main stage because already this program is packed and loaded with a lot of stuff, but I will talk through it and what I've done. Uh, basically, I just pulled up a simple... Uh, Yamaha patch piano. Okay, it sounds nice and pretty. Uh, now, one thing that I want to do to add a little bit more of a flavor to it and inspiration is maybe um, add some reverb to it. There's some just simple things that you can do with just your instrument that you may find boring, but if you just apply some simple, very basic things to your sound, it can open up a whole new world of inspiration. So, what do I mean by that? I want to take you through what I've done. Now, if I add reverb here, this is a without reverb. Okay. Now here's the reverb. Okay. So it's a lot. It's very wet. What's nice about that reverb is that it, it carries a lot. So if I'm playing a thousand tongues, oh, and a thousand tongues we see, right? The glory of your name, you are worthy. And then those whole notes that I was talking about at the beginning of this broadcast, they really hold over well with a lot of reverb. But you want to make sure that you keep the reverb tame. Don't overdo it where it washes out the band, okay? So you want to wash your volume right there. Now, a second thing that I've done, too, is that I've added delay. I've added both delay and reverb. 
like what a lot of guitar players do, right? They add reverb and, and chorus because it, you know, develops a great sound. Knowing knowing how to use it makes all the difference. So here's delay. So you hear that? So I'm able to achieve that sound by adding more reverb and delay, but it also causes me to play less. If I'm playing every note and every rhythm, the delay is going to be too much. Reverb will be too much. It'll wash out, okay? Okay. Uh, but if I'm playing like a slow song, you know, right? Uh, we get this. So the delay makes a really nice echoing effect, uh, but again, I don't want to overdo it because then it's too much. Now, what's cool about main stage is that not only you can add reverb and delay, and a lot of you guys know this already, um, but you can also add other instruments as well. So what I've done is I've added electric piano and strings and atmosphere. Now, I made up all these sounds myself, so I've, I've tweaked them myself. And uh, maybe at some point I can share them with you if you want. You know, I can get that to you. You can email me. Uh, so here I have the electric piano now. So that's very, very bright in the center register. So that's very, very bright right there. So what I want to do is turn that down just a bit. So it's not too much. Now what's really cool is that if I just want to eliminate the piano sound, then I get this sound. It's just electric only. It's almost like an organ sound, but it's not. It's it's definitely electric. Now, uh, other cool thing here is that now I want to add moving strings to it. So I want to turn that down just a little bit, and then here's my strings. still have that delay and the reverb going so it's not too much so if i'm going back and i'm playing you know a thousand tongues let's say we put that in okay so here's the bridge section okay so even with that happening I'm still able to achieve a really good sound. Uh, let's go back to the kind of the beginning of the song. Chorus. All right, so that's a lot of what's happening, but basically I'm just taking a sound, I'm trying to build it trying to maximize the uh, what's happening so you can get away with a lot of great things uh, these are just a few things to go over with you and I covered a lot so if you have questions about anything that I've done uh, just hit me up Brandon at worshipteamtraining.com and also you can comment here on any of the broadcasts and we'll get them cruise by the site worshipteamtraining.com if you want to learn more of what we can do for you for your worship team and for what you do as a worship leader so hey thanks so much for joining us in today the broadcast podcast also Facebook Live Paris go crystal thanks so much she says psalm 33 3 plays skillfully absolutely with proficiency and with discernment so guys thanks so much for joining us join us tomorrow we have our announcement november the 4th about the winners of the worship songwriting contest thanks so much again guys for being with us today we love you and we'll see you back at 10 a.m tomorrow to announce the winners and we'll see you back 
at worshipteamtraining.com. Thanks again for joining us. Bye. This has been a Worship Team Training broadcast and digital production with your host and training director, Brandon Dempsey. Worship Team Training provides live workshops and online resources to help inspire, create, and transform the leading of worship. We'll see you again right here on worshipteamtraining.com.